Four points picked up by the Hooligans, slowly stretching the lead forward, but just 16 points separate these two teams heading into jam number 12. 16 points is, is just one jam, really, so it's, it's still anybody's game. Um, yeah, Moose jamming for Casco Bay, and Eloy jamming for Philadelphia, and he whoops it around the outside immediately and takes lead. But Moose right there behind him, and both teams have an opportunity to pick up some points here. Ooh, that was a hard hit. Yeah, Moose just jumps right back up. Got a big hit to the shoulder, spun out, and a second hit in the side as it came down. Nothing not to be said, though, for Philadelphia's defense. They opened that hole for Oler to be able to power off the line and take the outside line. It was right there, ready and waiting for him. Both teams have uh, tremendous communication out there on track with their jammer and their blockers. Uh, you can hear them yelling, opening up gaps. Yeah, we talked in the first game, too, about the team's willingness to take chances, and that is definitely a characteristic of MRDA. I know in the MRDA postseason, like, that probably had some of the most foul outs I've seen in any tournament. So <laughs> these skaters are ready to take some risks. That is for sure. Frank Redhot hitting the pack and calling it, but, oh, man, that Casco Bay able to clear into the pack and pick up four as Frank calls it. 4-1 jam there for Casco. Fortunate for, for Casco having not, not taken lead there and still getting the point differential on that jam. Yeah, that, that is indicative of the direction this game's going, right? Is that, you know, huge fast play before Frank could even call it off. The Casco jammer hitting the pack and putting those points up. Mark of the Beast and Juka Hart's back on the track. We've seen this matchup a few times before. This time, though, gridlock on the jammer line as both jammers are trying to clear the defense. <laughs> Just unforgivable hit there from Philly as Casco's trying to fix a knee pad. Just says, nope, don't get to get on the track. Get out of my way. Knocked him out. Juka Hart, so that allowed him to pick up lead, and he is around on his first scoring trip. Meanwhile, Mark of the Beast still trying to complete his initial. Juka Oh, picking up a forearm penalty, headed to the crash course penalty box. Mark of the Beast now is going to get an opportunity to clear his initial unopposed. Our crash course penalty box is crowded right now. There are three skaters in there. One for Casco Bay, two for Philadelphia, including the jammer. Mark of the Beast has a star stash going on here, and finally makes a three to this year pass. The down the scoring run. This is for this jam. Let's see if Mark can pick up some points from Casco Bay. And he makes it through. Very nice work from the blockers to create space for the jammer to make it around the inside of the track right here at turn four in front of our announcer group. This jam will go for four two minutes. Juke able to catch up both jammers on their second scoring trip. And neither defense having it. Uh, that's some really good defense from Philadelphia right there. One lone blocker holding up the uh, Yeah, that's the sneak, sneaky spice. Sneaky spice. Seven, eight, nine. One on one with Mark. Sneaky spice holding Mark off, not letting the point pass. And because of that, two points only scored by uh, Philadelphia that round all four points scored by Casco. 30, they're up to 37, Philadelphia at 15. That was an 8-6 jam for Casco. Uh, again, the, the, the defense on both of these teams is, is not only we see a single effort like that from Sneaky Spice to hold back Mark of the Beast. Uh, very impressive. It says a lot about how the, the skill and play here. My baby daddy, Jenny Casco Bay, takes the lead very quickly. Yeah, and it does look like Casco has adjusted to Philly's strategy because Uller, usually one of those jammers we see get out quickly, and they've held Uller off long enough for my baby to get around, daddy to get around. 
and three for four and call before Uller has a chance. And that's all they needed, right, was that time for my baby daddy to get around the track before Uller got out. And that's what you need. Four points up on the board, chip away at it. Now they're just nine points separating the two teams. Again, a close game, all 20 minutes so far of this bout. I think both teams here have a strategy of, of uh, a hit it and quit it. P pick up as many points as you can, and call it off before the other team has the ability to score. But what we've seen is both teams have been able to score while not holding the lead, uh, which is an interesting dynamic to, to deal with. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think I, I think I'd compare it to, you know, where uh, every Thanksgiving your dad might carve a turkey and he's just kind of slowly going at it. These guys, they're the butchers. They're, they've got the meat cleaver and they're just hacking and they cut off exactly what they need to every single time. And that's an apex jump from Jim Demise. Very athletic move. Takes lead and let's see what she does with it. See if she can get, score some points here. And she has it off flip again like we talked about. It's a four points. Bringing us to just a five point game here in the first half. Yeah, Grim didn't just call it off. Grim called it off on half a skate there with one with one foot in the air and tilted on the other doing a spin and hitting their hips just taking the points and making sure philly didn't get any behind her if you're gonna do it you gotta do it in style right sneaky spice jamming from philadelphia against moose It's going to be Moose breaking out for Casco Bay. This is what Casco is looking for. Moose trying to create as much distance as he possibly can from the Philadelphia Chandler. Take the inside line. And again, he calls it off before any opportunity to score for Philadelphia. Oh, no. Uh, Philadelphia still picked up one. But so Moose picks up two. Just one more point chips away. Four point game. We are one scoring trip away from a tie game, folks. Ooh, they're jamming for Philadelphia. Sweet criminal for Casco Bay in white. Yeah, it looks like Uller is lining up for the hit on Smooth Criminal. No, a little bit of fake out. Uller just wants to go straight for lead. But Casco Bay's defense not having it. But meanwhile, Smooth Criminal getting recycled back by Philly. This is real close. There it is. Uller's able to clear and pick up lead. Oh, almost gets knocked out, but doesn't stays it, but stays in. And now Uller's around for a scoring trip. Oh, and that's going to be smooth criminal picking up a track cut, head to the crash course penalty box. Uller's now on a power jam. Oh, oh. Uller trying to stay on. One foot coming out of turn four, not able to make it though, and is going to try again through the pack. This is still the first scoring trip for Uller. He tries the inside this time, quick little apex step, gives him four points, and back around. Casco Bay uh, picking up the penalties on this jam. Three skaters in the box right now. Jenner's been released, Blocker's been released. Still one skater down on this jam. Let's see if they can do anything with the time left. I mean, not for lack of effort, though. Smooth Criminal's leaving it all out on the track, and Philadelphia is just holding and holding. And it has allowed Uller to just keep clearing, and that's another four points up, up to 12 for Uller and the Hooligans. All penalties have been released here. Now all are even out on the track. Uller knocked out by Sonic Boom. He's on the outside of track two, and Uli calls off the jam, but not before picking up 12 points to Philadelphia to extend their lead. 16 points. Yeah, the Hookins saw those points sneaking up, and they did not like it. So they said, Uli, oh, get out there, take some of our blockers, and let's just clear out this lead a little bit. They're back up to a 20-point differential. We've seen 20-point jams in this tournament. That's not to say that Tiny Dancer Oh no, sorry, that's going to be uh, my baby daddy. Can't do, put up 20 this round. It's gonna, he's going to be defending against Frank Red Hot. Frank Shred Hot, excuse me. Frank 
Sid Hunt. Knocked out of bounds, drawn back, back of the pack. Mimi Fridge is really pulling back as far as he can, but still, but I think Daddy also pulled back, still working hard to get through this initial pass. Both skaters, and my baby daddy breaks free, takes lead. Frank still dealing with that tenacious D of Casco Bay. My baby daddy trying for an apex jump, doesn't quite get it. <laughs> and Frank uh, took. Frank is taken down. The microphone is stopping. That's possible. The score is now 51 Casco Bay, 67 Philadelphia Hooligans. Casco Bay picks up four on that last jam. want the logo to face him. Yeah. Just a little bit of uh, technical work here in the announcer booth as we adjust some of our microphones, help you guys on the stream out just a bit. Meanwhile, headed in, oh, we have an OTO on the track. We missed that while we were microphoning over here. So yeah. Headed in, we are at 67 to 51. Philadelphia just losing, but we've had multiple lead changes. Going into jam number 20, what do you expect to see with five minutes left in the period, Bruce? Uh, I, I think we're gonna see a lot of what we've seen before, a lot of fast-paced roller derby, a lot of hard hitting, and uh, I, this is, isn't to say anything about the jammers, but low scoring. They've been a hit it and quit it strategy in both teams. We've rarely seen a jam where the differential is more than four. So uh, I think we're going to see a lot of the same, and I think maybe we'll see a different change of strategy after the half, after they have a chance to regroup. Uh, but I think we're going to see fast jams. Um, I, I would bet we see probably at least four more jams within the last five minutes. You know, fast jams, that could be a great derby name. It is just out there for anybody who wants it. So the... Yeah, Philadelphia looks like they're going to start with a power start here. Casco Bay starting with a jammer in the box. It's my baby daddy He's sitting in that box from the last jam. Juke starting on the power start. All of our officials just realigning to start. We got the rolling whistle, which means we're headed in to jam number 20 now. Duke of Hearts knocked out of bounds, drawn back, still working his way through the Casco Bay defense. Still behind the defense. Oh, oh, oh man. The penalty's been released by Vivi Daddy back out on the track. Yeah, Chuka Hart's cleared a huge hit there from Pearl Jammer. Pearl Jammer just about out of play though. That's why Juke was able to continue, but man, what a hit Juke had to pick up. Uh, my baby daddy trying an apex jump there, gets knocked out in flight. This Philadelphia defense is tough this jam. My baby, baby daddy working hard to make his way through and finally makes his way through. Now on a scoring drive. Yeah, Juka Hart's over there after that hit. Doesn't look like he wanted to do much more, but he wanted to let my baby daddy work for it. So he waited for my baby daddy to clear the initial before calling that jam. Juke took his three points for that pass and said, you know what, I'm ready to sit at the bench mm -hmm. after that massive knock. 
Sneaky Spice and Moose lined up on our Centris Digital Jammer line. And Moose on the outside sees a hole and goes for it, but a final little knock there by Mike O. Mike O comes back and Moose tries it again. Sneaky Spice, helmet cover off, still holding it though. And Moose out front takes lead, doing no short order from Tiny Dancer, who is just pushing the Philadelphia defense out of the way, making a hole for his jammer. Moose back around again, picks up four points for Casco Bay. Yeah, that was a bit of an outside line jump on one foot to be able to clear that pack for four. Here's the second scoring trip for Moose. Sneaky Spice has cleared her initial. Moose up again, Mike again, a huge hit from Mike on Moose. Oh. Sneaky Spice making it through her initial. Mike is not going to allow Moose to pass though, so Moose just calls it 4-4 jam for the teams. And a timeout being called by Casco Bay. Again, it, it does look like both teams are taking on the strategy of let's just hit the jammer so hard we don't want them to play anymore. I, I, it's a winning strategy depending on how you look at it, right? As, as long as it's a clean, safe, and legal hit, you can hit them as hard as you want. And that's what they're going to do to try to get the jammer to not want to score any more points. I'm, I'm here for it. It's fun to watch. I just... Oh, man, I don't envy those jammers at all. I, th this is the action we all came for. This is what we want to see. Fast derby, hard hits. Score sits at 74, Philadelphia, 58, Casco Bay. Still anyone's game. Yeah, again, 16-point difference. That is a jam away, given the right matchup of jammer and blockers. So it does look like that's an official review that was asked for, I'm guessing by, yeah, it looks like Casco is asking for an official. We'll wait for our refs and NSO friends to let us know what it is. I think I was so distracted by the Mike O and Moose matchup that I wasn't paying attention to anything else going on. We, we might be witnessing the start of a rivalry. Uh, this, th that matchup, I could watch that all day long. Yeah, Maiko and Moose, but that's not to be said by Juke and uh, Casco the last time around, oh, too. I think that, you know, we mentioned that there's some powerful jammers out on the track, and both teams' defenses have identified that. They've locked on, and they've said search and destroy. Uh, both teams here at the uh, end of the first half have picked up a fair amount of penalties, something to be concerned, not overly concerned about, something to watch going forward. Philadelphia has 15 penalties total for a team and 12 for Casco Bay. Wait, does it think for a cut on Jammer from a non-initiator? They will lose the Just waiting for our skating referees to inform the teams of the result before we share the OR with the group. And there they go. So White Jam the Casco Bay was looking for a track cut penalty. Uh, uh, the official team reviewed it, decided that there was not enough information or that that track cut did not appear. So they are going to not retain their review. No change in what was called on the track and we're headed into Jam 22. Grim Demise jamming for Casco Bay. Uller for Philadelphia. Yeah, no stranger to this matchup, but it does look like defense has arranged, rearranged, and isn't letting either jammer pick up speed, which I think is one of the things that was allowing them to clear earlier, and thusly, both jammers have been stuck behind defense. Uller taking a further trip back to try to line up and pick it up. 
Casco not letting them have it though. Grimm up at the front trying to change strategy and bridge out Philadelphia. Philadelphia sees that though and is trying to adjust. Two blockers on Grimm and that's going to get her recycled all the way back. Uller also drawn back on that last push there. Grimm getting help from her blockers, trying to create a hole for her to get through. Both jammers still on their initial pass. Grimm's drawn back again. Yeah, I have a feeling that that time during that OR was spent with coaches <laughs> briefing their blockers on how to try to hold off some of this aggression. But Uller finally able to find a hole on the inside. <laughs> and Grimm makes it through on one skate with a star, a sneak pass. Oh, that was, that was beautiful. There's Ratchet. <laughs> Didn't even hit Grimm. Just scared Just yelled up at to Grimm screaming, trying to scare her off the track. I love it. I don't think I've seen that strategy yet, but it was, it was a thing to watch. Oh my there, goodness. There's nothing in the rule book that says you can't yell at the jammer. I, well, you know what? I I was scared. It was coming <laughs> right at us, turn three into four. <laughs> What's going on? Nurse Ratchets finally lost it. Smooth criminal jamming for Casco Bay. Frank Shredhot for Philadelphia. Smooth criminal makes it out quickly take lead for Casco Bay. Frank still trying to work his way through the defense. Tiny Dancer's out there who is uh, basically as wide as the track is. Uh, very hard to make it around. Giant man on skates. Yeah, Frank Shredhot though bridges him out and clears the initial. Looks like Frank thought he was lead and tried to call it, but in fact Smooth Criminal was. <laughs> Casco Bay's picking up four and calls it off before Frank has an opportunity to return the favor. Lead is now cut to 13 as we're headed into intermission. I don't, I don't know if you caught that bruise, but headed into that, what got Smooth Criminal that lead is Maiko was trying to use the rest of his team as a blocker, so he pushed his co-blocker over towards Smooth Criminal and I don't think that that blocker was expecting it. Fell to his feet and that created a hole for Smooth Criminal to jump right through and end the first period with a four point jam. Just incredible gameplay out on the what, track. What a half, what athleticism from the skaters out here. Uh, just good derby all around. Absolutely, we'll be back in just under 14 minutes. Did you guys announce food lately? Uh, we did at the beginning.
out. That is the last roll.
we are just one minute away from the start of the second half of this third game of the Battle of Bunker Hill Invitation. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, first half of the game, we're sitting at 75 to 62. The first half of the game, huge physical game from both sides. We, we had the distinct advantage and pleasure of being able to watch that track side. Uh, for those of you at home, I mean, I, the stream is incredible, but quite honestly, Casco Bay hosting an amazing tournament this weekend. Just really good derby all around. Great services offered, great food trucks, yep. great venue. Can't say enough about Casco Bay and their great hospitality here at the Dover Ice Arena in Dover, New Hampshire. Yeah. And we're not even halfway through the first day, so we're not even a quarter way through the derby action here in Dover this weekend. So if you're around, if you're within a two hour drive, it is worth your time to come down here and check out some derby live. Two hours, four hours, some of us 10 hours. Some 10. Yep. We have Austin here. That's from right. Texas. That is right. If if Derby can get here from Austin, Texas, you can get here from the tri-state area. Right. Anywhere. If you can hear my voice, you should make it down. Yeah, that's the thing about the tri-state area. You're just saying three states. Could be any three states. Any three states. Yeah. I'm not even sure which ones you're talking about. I don't mean me either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, officials are just. Getting things in order, we are seconds away from the start of our second half. Philadelphia Hooligans 75, Casco Bay Roller Derby 62, 13 points separate these two teams. Our first MRDA game of the tournament. Now it does look like Philadelphia is gonna start with two blockers in the box. Both Frank Shredhot and My Baby Daddy out on the track as jammers. Looks like My Baby Daddy is electing to take a running start at the jammer line. And that's going to work. A quick, quick little hop on the inside. My Baby Daddy picks up lead for Casco Bay. Frank Shredhot not far behind, though. He is coming around maybe half a track behind my baby daddy he's got fast moving pack here they're trying to prevent mbd from getting by and picking up any points but he does he calls off the jam before frank has an opportunity to catch up yeah mike o and tiny dancer saw both of that uh, sorry that's a uh, knucklehead mike o and knucklehead saw all of that unfolding in front of them and just put the gas on and said, nope, we're making a run for it. Mm -hmm. And that they did. And that was enough time to clear the penalty box, more importantly. So we're going to start with a 10 on 10 jam here going to the jam number two. Juke of hearts out there from Philadelphia. Grim demise for Casco Bay. A grim dancing her way through the Philadelphia defense. Coming around turn four at speed. Can she turn it into points? Yes, she can. First scoring pass is successful. Duke of Hearts, they are still stuck behind the Casco Bay defense. Have yet to make it by their initial pass. Number 207, Mini Fridge called for a penalty headed to our penalty box. Now Juke decided they had enough and passed off to Sneaky Spice. Sneaky Spice is wearing the star. But Casco is going to call off the jam before Sneaky Spice is able to make it back. 8 nothing jam there for Casco Bay. That takes them up to 74 to Philadelphia 75. One point separates these teams going into the jam number three. This is uh, some of the most exciting roller derby I've seen in a, in a very long time. The, the pace, the intensity, the hits, it's all there. Oh, Moose almost found the inside line, but Benito just barely knocking Moose out and recycling him back. That was enough time. Oh, I thought that was a lead whistle. That was a, that was a penalty whistle. 
Uller called for a track cut, I believe. Nope. Anyway, we have ourselves a power jam. Moose pulled the old star stash, confusing the defense. Yep, so either Uller was jammer when he, they entered the box, or Moose took the star off. Either way, there's going to be no lead this jam. We're going to go the full two minutes. Now Moose called for a track cut. Power jam in the other direction. Yeah, the last thing Casco Bay wants is a power jam with Uller out there. Uller is through and has made his initial. Uller taking on Casco Solo. Now the hooligans are in for some offense. And that works. Uller through for four. Setting up for his second scoring trip. Moose released from the box. We're all even out on track now with 20 seconds left of the jam. Let's see if Moose can capitalize and pick up any points here for Casco Bay before time expires. And no, sent back to the box. Another track cut. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna take Moose up to five penalties, I believe. Philadelphia able to put up another four points there at the end, making that an 8-3 jam. And just when they thought they were sneaking up, Philadelphia claws a little bit of that lead back up to 83, six points ahead of Casco Bay at 77. Philadelphia's gonna have a power start here. Casco Bay's jammer is in the penalty box to start this jam. The fourth jam of the second half. Pickering really trying to muscle Frank Shredhop out of bounds unsuccessfully. And Frank Shredhop sees Moose coming out of the box and elects to call off the jam. Looks start, like, start this next jam all even, but not before Philadelphia picks up four points. I uh, thought I saw another three go up there at the end. Maybe I'm incorrect. I've been wrong before. I don't believe that. <laughs> there, is, there, is, there is the thought there that if an announcer said it, it's probably wrong. Oh, oh big hit there, there, I'm I'm a big hit out of bounds. Smooth criminal picks up lead for Casco Bay. Juke is out there working really hard to get past the Casco Bay defense, but they can't seem to find that gap. And he's, oh, yeah. Do oh, we have a timeout? Big round of applause for Juke as they exit the track, assisted by our medical team. A big thank you to our local EMTs keeping us safe throughout this tournament. We cannot do it without you. Thank you, EMTs and medics. Derby's a very physical sport. Injuries do happen, but we're glad to see 
yeah, juke making it. Yeah, juke up and looks like in as good spirits as possible as they exit the track, but did have to exit assisted. That's going to be a big loss for the hooligans. Teams are lining up for jam number six. Philadelphia looks like they are fielding Uller. Casca is going to field Mark of the Beast. Casca with a blocker in the box. Not viewable on the stream, but Dover Ice Arena here in Dover, New Hampshire, absolutely packed to the gills. Our stands are full, our trackside seating is full, and who can blame them with this level of derby going on today? Back at it, Uller and Mark of the Beast are gonna go for the next jam. Uller getting recycled back by Pickering. Mark also getting recycled by the Hooligans. It's going to be Uller that's able to come out as lead. Mark still trying to make it through the Hooligans. Mark is a blocker down, so Uller has the advantage as Uller enters on his first scoring pass. He just swapped penalty, penalties there. The Sonic Boom released. Spock and off, sent to the box. Pickering now sent to the box. Jammers neck and neck, but Uller is a scoring trip up. Uller hits the pack and calls it as Mark takes a barrel roll through the outside. That last pass though, Uller not picking up any points. Mark picking up the four on that trip, evening out the jam. What an effort from Mark of the Beast. What great defense from Casco, able to even that jam up. We're still just six points between these two teams. What a game. It is back and forth to say the least. We have MBD, my baby daddy out there for Casco Bay. Frank Shredhot again. This is a matchup we've seen a few times here this afternoon. Pretty even matchup before. Let's see what happens this time. My baby daddy pushed outside. French Red, a uh, hot taking lead. Yeah. Just around uh, turn one. Yeah, B Nito on the hooligans has just been absolutely doing some damage to these jammers, and it's no different for uh, MBD. MBD makes it through his initial pass. He's one lap behind French Red Hot. And Frank calls off the jam. Looks like picks up three points. Extending their lead to nine. Here with just over 21 minutes left to play in the second half. Well, what a nail by the breeze. I really mean, this is. is just so much fun to watch. This is a matchup I Interesting matchup. Uh, Grim Demise and Sneaky Spice. Yeah, I'm out not there sure we've seen there. this yet. We haven't. Very similar style skaters. Let's see what happens here. Both working hard to get past the other team's defense. Looks like Grim. They both make it out. It feels like at the exact same time, but they give lead to Sneaky Spice, who immediately calls it off before anyone has an opportunity to score points, keeping the score, 94 Philadelphia, 
85 Casco Bay. Yeah, Sneaky Spice, no stranger to the Jammer on Jammer love, but uh, it looks like that time around she elected to not do that. Uh, just calls off the jam. There's been, there's been quite enough uh, Jammer action on the track, I would say, this game. So yeah. let's just send it to the next jam, set up for a new one, and see if we can do a little better. Moose for Casco Bay, Ula for Philadelphia. Ula drawn back, Moose still out in front, tiptoes down the outside line and takes lead for Casco Bay. They very much needed this now if they want to stay in this game. Let's see if he can capitalize. And denied by the tripod, that is the Philadelphia defense. And Again, thank you to Dover Fire and Rescue for being our on-site medical staff and EMTs here at the event. Moose able to exit the track again in good spirit, similar to what we saw earlier with some help from some friends. Assisted leave. Moose again, <laughs> not, a, not a, a, a small loss for Casco. Moose is, looks like he's gonna gear down and we're gonna reset coming out of that injury timeout. <laughs> Lining up for jam number 10, Frank Shredhot and My Baby Daddy, also known as MBD. Don't forget, folks, we do have an after party for those who have joined us here in New Hampshire. Our after party is taking place at the Brick Bar and Grill at 2 Orchard Street, right here in Dover, just a mile down the road. They have a full bar, and there will be a first come, first serve buffet style food with sliders, chicken tenders, wings, fries, chicken wraps, and regular and full pork mac and cheese. Ooh. That's where I will be. <laughs> And pulled pork mac and cheese has my name written all over it. So that's what I will be doing later. If you're hungry now, still have our wood fire pizza truck and our shaved ice right outside that big bay door in the back of the arena. Be sure to go check it out and support our food truck vendors right here at the Dover Ice Arena in Dover, New Hampshire. And if you are here on site, please uh, go check out our vendor village out in the back of the arena. All teams have a, a booth where they're selling merch, and there's also Battle of Bunker Hill Invitational merch that is purchased. And uh, Casco Bay is doing some um, custom heat pressing as well if you want to personalize the merch that you buy. We have a rolling missile, which tells us we're gonna restart dirty here. Frank Treadhot, MDBD, MBD, Opting for a bit of a running start. Frank Treadhot is on the Spectrum Digital, Centrum Digital Jammer Launch. And it's Frank Treadhot for the Hooligans that is able to clear the initial and grab lead. Frankie D does make it through, but Frank has already passed his initial, his first scoring pass. And calls it off before MBD can get back to the pack. 
It's another four point jam for the Hooligans, taking them up to 98. 11 points between Casco and Philadelphia currently. Headed into jam number 11. Still over 18 minutes remaining in the game. <laughs> Such close derby. Just I am nine, so nine points separate these two teams. Sneaky Spice and Smooth Criminal out on the track. Sneaky Spice lives up to Sneaky's name and makes her way through. Grabs lead. Smooth Criminal still trying to make it past the hooligans. Sneaky Spice bridging Casco forward. Through on the outside, makes her way around. Picks up four points. Oh, but Smooth Criminal finally able to exit the pack. Sneaky Spice going to hit and likely call that she does. Sneaky Spice picks up one point that trip. Smooth Criminal does not make it back fast enough. So that makes that a 5 nothing jam for the Hooligans, taking them across the century mark to 103, Casco Bay, 87. Uller's out there for Philadelphia in this jam. He's had some uh, some success here tonight. Let's see if Casco Bay can handle his jamming here. Mark of the Beast working hard against Philadelphia. He's getting stood up. Oh, he powers his way through. Mark of the Beast using sheer strength to get through that pack and take lead for this 12th jam. Uller with a huge jump on the inside. It, Casco is doing everything to hold Uller back and Uller just said, I'll do it in the air. Uller though clears it and that's just enough to force the call from Casco. Casco able to pick up three that pass, called it before Uller made it back. Three nothing jam for Casco, up to 90, 13 points between the two teams heading into Jam 13. Hard to believe he stayed on his feet there. Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been watching Uller for quite a bit and I, I'm gonna have to say that that's a fairly regular thing is just when you think he's not gonna make it, he absolutely does. My baby daddy out there for Casco Bay. Frank Shredhop of Philadelphia, MBD out in front to take lead. See if he can capitalize on this and pick up some points. Yeah, Mike, Mike O for the Hooligans sent to the box. That's a big blocking force, not on the track. That lets MBD clear for four. Frank Shredhop still on his initial pass. The Casco Bay defense is proving difficult this round for him. He can't find a gap or sneak around the outside. And a very impressive apex jump by MBD to pick up another four points, closing the gap even further. MBD taking contact, called for a track cut, sent to the box. We now have a power jam for Philadelphia, Misery Machine, taking the star from Frank Treadhot, successful star pass. Let's see if Casco Bay, they have no answer to this. Oh, that's bad news for Casco Bay. They were clawing it back, but MBD was lead head to the box, so this jam's going to time. Misery Machine is absolutely doing work, though, on these Casco Bay blockers. They were just used to MBD's force. Now they have to deal. Uh, now they have to deal with Misery's uh, agility. MBD released from the box, back on track. To see if he can pull it closer. It's knocked out on the inside, drawn back behind the pack, and time expires for a net zero eight. So it's an 11-10 jam there for Philadelphia. Just one point differential there. Casco Bay not quite at the century mark. 99, Philadelphia at 114. 
a real missed opportunity there for Casco Bay to close that gap even further there. Uh, an unfortunate penalty at a very unfortunate time for them. Oh, Duke of Hearts back out on the track after their injury. Good to see that. Grim Demise dancing her way through the pack takes lead for Casco Bay. Yeah, just being honest, when I saw Duke go down, I didn't think they would be returning, but no. great to see them back out. And I'm sure Philadelphia is just as excited. Oh, that's an apex jump. Yeah, that's a very impressive apex jump. Grim doing some work. Duke in the box. Grim's on a power jam. This is what Casco was looking for last time. And uh, for those of you not here, the crowd is going wild. Casco Bay, our home team here at this tournament. Uh, it is hard to hear myself right now with their cheers every time she makes a score and pass. And Graham calls it off after another two points. 12, a 14 point jam for Casco, taking them to 113, the Phillies 114. One point separates these teams, and Philadelphia calls a team timeout to say, let's get this together, folks. Let's see what we can do. We can't let these power jams happen and have this much recover. They had a, not a comfortable lead, but just a little bit enough to stay ahead, and it is gone. The, the crowd in here is electric. It, you can just feel the energy. And uh, it, it's all just stemming from the intensity of our skaters out there right now. They are skating with speed and strength, and every jam is a delight to watch. Yeah, Casco Bay also, you know, being our hosts for the Battle of Bunker, Battle of Bunker Hill Invitational. Obviously, we have a little bit of a home team advantage here, and True. the crowd is loving every bit of it. By the end of this weekend, I will be able to say that without stumbling. That's my new goal. I've just chosen to avoid saying it <laughs> at all. Oh, I'll take the fall. <laughs> uh, Juke for Philly is going to start in the box. That's going to put Smooth Criminal on a power start. And Smooth Criminal tries and he's in. That's going to work. Mm. Outside line and then a cut across is good for lead for Smooth Criminal. He maintained his balance and then turned on the afterburners. Makes it through again. Picks up four points and we have a lead change. I believe this is the first time in the second half that Casper Bay has had the lead of the game. Casca who calling that all smooth criminal, hitting the pack, little bit of a trip and a bump on our jammer ref. All smiles all around though. We know that that's not intentional. Good spirits all around. But I tell you what, a six point jam is good for a lead change for Casco Bay. And as you said just a second ago, Bruce, the first time they've been in the lead in this half. Jam 16 starts with Uller and Mark of the Beast on the track. Philadelphia all of a sudden finding themselves in a place they haven't been in quite a while this game, having to dig out from a five point lead. Number 10, Frank in the box for Casco Bay. Number 11, Uller just forcing, absolutely forcing the lead out of that. Uller, it looks like he even thought he might have had a track cut. Was a little surprised to see it not called and kept going. But he'll take his lead and calls off the jam after getting knocked slightly out of bounds. But that not before picking up all four points. Four nothing jam for the hooligans, taking them up to 118. Again, we're back to a one point difference. My goodness, what a game. Oh, 
big hug from MBD and Frank's Red Hot at the Jammer Line. We love to see it. Lots of love from both teams at Centris Digital Jammer Line. MBD choosing strength over finesse this jam gets held up by Philadelphia. Frank Red Hot makes his way through the pack, takes lead for this jam. Picks up four points for Philadelphia and calls a jam off. We have ourselves another lead change, 122 Philadelphia, 119 Casco Bay. Just under 10 minutes left to play. Three quarters of the way through this game, and there are only three points that separate these two teams. Yeah, with this amount of lead changes, those of you watching at home and playing along with the lead changes, you're going to need to stay at home for the rest of the day. I don't think you're going to be able to drive. <laughs> Grim Demise Janney for Casco Bay. Juke of Hearts for Philadelphia. Again, really good to see Juke back out there after their injury before. Doesn't seem to be affecting them. And Grim Demise dancing their way into the lead for Casco Bay. Oh no! Juke headed to the penalty box. And the power jam. Oh, oh, oh big, wow, big hit. Oh, uh, that's a nice beam dip. A good beam dip from Grim Demise to avoid that contact. Thought she was going to call it up there, but she continued to go. Picks up another four points. Grim absolutely just powering through the pack, and it seems to be Sneaky Spice that keeps taking the brunt of it. I love Grim's skating style. She, she picks up momentum and then does her best to keep it and tries to use it to her advantage going through as opposed to running right into the wall. She tries to use her momentum as a slingshot around and uh, to great success that last time. Picking up 10 points for Casco Bay. You know what that means, Bruce? So another lead change? Another lead change! Uh, another lead change. This, I, hats off to all the skaters out there. This is a, one of the most entertaining World Derby games I've seen in a very long time. Well, you know, and, and that's what we love, seeing these tournaments like this being hosted. Good matchups match all weekends. It's fun for us. It's fun for you at home. It's fun for the skaters. Like, this is why we do what we do, folks. And we're just happy to be a part of it. Uh, looks like we have an official review being requested by the hooligans. Uh, they have communicated their wants and desires to the officiating crew and their meeting. Eventually here in a second, I'm sure we'll hear from our official friends and let you know what's going on. Philadelphia has edged out Casco for the most penalties. 27 penalties for Philadelphia, 22 for Casco. Yeah, no skater up to five. We do have a couple at four. Juke Parts, lots of threes. Has four. Moose had four, but Moose is out with an injury, so no skater at risk for, roller, for uh, Casco Bay Roller Derby. our captains and coaches have been made aware of the result. It looks like they have. Philadelphia is looking for a uh, skating out of bounds penalty from Grimm in that last jam. The refs did not see that, so they are going to decline that request. Philadelphia will not retain the review.
smooth criminal jamming for Casco Bay Ruler for Philadelphia. Casco Bay's defense is holding their own until Uller got an assist from his own blocker. Uller's got seven points to make up for. Oh, wow, that was confusing. I thought Uller had taken a knee, but it turns out it was Smooth Criminal who calls off the jam before any points are scored to maintain their lead. Yeah, I wasn't looking at that at the time. But it did appear, I'm guessing that was a no pass, no penalty. So Uller didn't pick up lead. And as soon as we heard the lead whistle, I saw the Casco Bay bench explode with car! <laughs> <laughs> and that they did, no 0-0 zero, zero jam on that pass. Up on the line, Frank Treadhot up against Mark of the Beast. the beast tiptoeing through the inside. That was impressive. Very, very impressive he maintained uh, stayed inside. Yeah, I think Mark's entire body was out of bounds, but his feet stayed in. Along with that big jump to clear the pack, the crowd goes nuts and he calls it after the four. Up to 133, 11-point lead now for Casco. Where did this come from? This is going exactly the direction Casco is hoping it. This, and, uh, and a jammer down. They're a jammer down. They're right a jammer now down. This. And this is the largest lead they've had all game. And at one point, they were down 17 and are now up by 11. Juke of Hearts jamming for Philadelphia. MBD for Casco Bay. We've seen this matchup a number of times today. MBD out in front takes lead. Juke can't seem to make it by the defense, and as I say that, he does. They do. Yeah, all you have to say is that, and then the opposite will happen. Oh, big hit from Duke there. As Duke enters the pack, they took a hit from that blocker and kept going. Duke good for two points that trip. Looks like three points picked up by Casco. Still not able to claw away at the lead. 136 Casco, Philadelphia, 124. Right now it's all about time management for Casco Bay. They have a 12 point lead with five minutes left to play. They have to keep the scoring down from Philadelphia and maintain their lead, which will be easy to do when you take a lead like that. Grim Demise jumps out in front. Uller not far behind. Smart move by Casco Bay, calling off the jam before any points can be picked up from Philadelphia. Casco picks up two. And just like that, 14 point lead for Casco. Just incredible work. Again, Grim that this half. Grim, we, this is a different Grim than we saw in the first half. Just absolutely destroying it out on the track today. We're seeing a lot of strategy that we saw in the first half. A lot of hit it and quit it, score a point, call off the jam. In the middle of the game, the middle 20 minutes or so, we saw some long, drawn out jams which did not bode well for Casco Bay. Now they're back to their strategy and I think it's working for them as we can tell by the score. Smooth criminal apex jump takes lead. Big big step here for Casco Bay. Can they extend their their lead over Philadelphia? Get some security points. Yeah Frank Treadhot still not able to clear again like you said, Bruce, this change in strategy really benefited Casco. There was a noticeable change mid-game, like you said, where they just were absolutely trying to hold back the jammers, not allow them any room to run, to try to prevent some of the big, quick hits. But that was not working for Casco, and recycling to be able to do this is exactly what they needed. Frank Shredhot finally made able to make it out, but Smooth Criminal is going to call the jam where they stand after picking up two points that trip. Another 2 nothing jam for Casco. They are now 16 points in the lead. Casco Bay 140, Philadelphia 124.
Our penalty box today is sponsored by Crash Course. They keep, uh, they help busy roller derby athletes increase strength, conquer self-doubt, and create the habits of high performers to become all-stars and MVPs on the track and in life. We'd love for you to join our community where we constantly work on supporting each other, lifting each other up, and inspiring each other to crush goals. You can join on Facebook, just facebook.com slash groups slash Chrissy Crash with two Ks, K-R-I-S-Y-K-R-A-S. You want free specific derby workouts and athlete mindset tips to be able to level up this year? Check them out on Instagram, same handle, Chrissy Crash with Ks. We've seen this before, Bruce. Mark of the Beast and Uller. It's a matchup probably a dozen times already today. Considering it's Mark of the Beast, I think it's a match made in heck. <laughs> oh. Uther dances around the outside for Philadelphia, it takes lead. Mark still in the back, yet to make his initial pass. Successful star pass from Casco Bay. Mark of the Beast hands the star to Pickering. Uller calls off the jam, but not before picking up four points. So again, clawing back some of that lead. 12 points separate our teams right now. 128 Philadelphia, 140 Casco Bay. Just over two and a half minutes left to play. Uh, you know, at least there'll be two more jams. Yeah, and 12 points is a jam away. I mean, yeah, it's still anybody's game here. This is a nail biter. And, and quite frankly, we could. This is a perfect condition. We might see a, a tiebreaker jam today. That very, would that would be rare. exciting. Yeah, very rare to very see rare that uh, tiebreaker jam in uh, flat track rules for sure. Um, just a brief timeout while we adjust some scoreboard. As you can see over our shoulder, we are back at it. So it looks like our teams are going to line up. Our officials are ready. There's the five second call. MBD up against Duke of Hearts. And it's MBD that grabs lead, but he thinks he's either out or, or knocked out. He's gonna recycle, but a quick little recycle and out. This is, this is big for Casco Bay. If they can hold Philadelphia scoreless and stretch the clock out. Huge move by MBD. Apex jump, picks up four, extends the lead. Two minutes left to play. Does it again. Wow. I'm Incredible. tired just watching him. Juke does a star stash to get through the pack initially. And MBD calls it off before any points can be picked up by Philadelphia. That was a huge jam. Huge jam for Casco. Nine points up. That makes the lead 21 points with just over a minute and a half remaining. That could have been what makes our game. MBD putting those points up. That's what Casco needed 100% Bruce. That's what you like to see, I'm sure. You being the home ref for Casco, I'm sure you're eating this yeah. up. Not just me, the crowd here chanting MBD as he skates off the track. Uh, we, we do have a, a, a skate skater of the match here as far as the crowd's concerned. Frank Shredhot jamming for Philadelphia. Smooth criminal out there for Casco Bay. And we have ourselves a power jam for Casco. This is huge. Huge for them. There's no reason to not just let this run. This is exactly what Casco is looking for. Yeah, Philadelphia is not going to make it easy for them, but. This is the ideal situation Casco wanted to see. This is what I was talking about before, time management. 
Pasco, the last five minutes of this game, they did everything right. Yeah, Frank so, Shredhot back on the track, but Philly's two blockers down. Frank Shredhot, huge hits entering the pack. A vi uh, an audible oh uh from the audience. My goodness. The oh. Sonic Boom putting his shoulder into that defense there. Gets the hold penalty. Sent back to the box just as least. It won't make a difference as time runs to zero. Yep, and Casco calls it. The crowd losing their minds. We're gonna wait for the final point totals to come in. But I think we do know the result. We'll wait though. Again, Bruce, what, what do you have to make of that? Just an absolute you know, Cinderella story I, I, for those uh, for those fans of the mid 80 golf movies. When, when people go to see roller derby, this is what they want to see. I am buzzing from this match. I am, I am full of adrenaline. I've been sitting the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> Only imagine what these skaters are feeling right now. Yeah, I, not often do you see physical reactions from announcers, but the whole time, the two of us up on our feet, loving every minute of it. That was the final whistle. Bruce, let's, why don't you give us a final score? Uh, Philadelphia 130, Casco Bay 156. Casco Bay takes the win. The first MRDA match of this tournament goes to Casco Bay, our host team. And Casco Bay takes their victory lap to a crowd of their fans. What a great match for them. Coming up next at 3 o'clock, we have Austin Anarchy versus Toronto for another MRDA matchup. Join us right back here. A new link will likely go out. Be sure to check Casco Bay and Battle of Bunker Hill social media pages to grab that link. We'll see you right back here at 3 o'clock.